Next question is from Fulvio of the Castle. Should I train behind the neck pull downs or overhead presses to achieve better mobility, or is it just too dangerous? So this is one of those exercises that I was taught. The horse. I was actually taught as a trainer never teach. So when I first got my first certification, they said never do overhead presses behind the neck, never do pull downs behind the neck. Totally bad for the shoulders. In fact, I literally I remember the instructor doing this. The instructor stood up got a towel, so he had a regular towel, and he twisted it, and then he bent it, and he's like, this is what you're doing to the muscles of the shoulder when you go behind the neck, and so I was like, oh my gosh, I'm so afraid of these. Yeah. Later on, because all the bodybuilders did these exercises, and I thought to myself, you know, it can't be that bad, let me try it out. I first tried it out, and I didn't necessarily have the mobility, so I would shorten the range of motion and go real light. Eventually, I could do them full range of motion, and then eventually I could add load, and it made my shoulder mobility better. Now, is this the best way to achieve better shoulder mobility? No. But I will say this. Uh, if you can't do an exercise, what you should probably do is figure out how to be able to do that exercise with good stability and good mobility because you're just improving your body's ability to move. Your And your shoulders should be able to do things with exercises behind the neck. All, and now it's, the only reason why it's dangerous a lot of people can't do it, so they have to get themselves to be able to do it. Yeah, I, I'm going to say that 99% of you should do the mobility work first and get that done and then go to movements like this. And yeah. the reason, although I will say I did what you did. So I actually was, while I was also working on shoulder mobility, I was also doing behind the neck presses when I didn't really have the full mode in. It started with just the bar. Now, here's the thing you got to, if you do that, Okay, because that's totally fine. You could do that. You could start super lightweight and just get used to. Is you have to understand how the body compensates in order for you to do that. Yeah. So one of the things, and what I mean by that is, so when I I went from somebody who always shoulder press in the front. Okay, now I'm going to start these behind the neck. Well, what I notice when I do this, my low back arches and mm -hmm. I slide. And you're probably sorry, pushing your head forward. That's right. And, you, and then you push the head forward, and so I would have to get in that position, and then I would have to tighten my core rotate my pelvis, keep that in that position, and then really slow yeah. and control. You just do it with a broomstick to start. Yeah, so you, have to, you mm -hmm. have to know how the body is going to cheat when you go to do that if you if you don't have the right prere prerequisites first. Well, it's so, imperative like you pass the wall test, you pass these things that we've sort of outlined uh, in terms of like uh, points of contact. If you can't maintain it, like it, it's sort of like there has to be a pre-qualifier in there to be able to do because it is, and I understand why certifications did sort of like put that out there. Like they didn't want trainers basically jumping their clients into these because they do put you at a little bit more risk, mm -hmm. but there's a lot of value in them once once you have the mobility and the strength to be able to pull it off, it really does stimulate the muscles in different ways. Well, that's why this is so important because imagine I don't know that, but I, I start working on that behind the head with a bar and then I had 25s and then 45s. Meanwhile, the whole time I've got this massive arch in mm -hmm. my back and pushing my head forward in order for me to do it. Yeah, less than ideal movement and your risk of injury now goes up. Way up. Mm -hmm. So to me, like I wouldn't recommend somebody do it. It's like how we talk about the barefoot training thing right like mm -hmm. if you never barefoot train like you shouldn't all of a sudden go run your your mile run every day barefoot like for the first time like start with just walking outside yeah. barefoot for a while and and start building that up before you start well to that's why it. i liked too like z press was a, it was a great one in terms Love of like that. really figuring out whether you have the thoracic stabilization you know to be able to keep everything all those um you know keep the bracing mechanisms in place so it protects your spine yeah, this person should get MAPS performance. So if you don't have MAPS performance, like because we do the Z press in there, we address mobility yep. stuff in there. So this is a perfect program for somebody who wants to get to a place where they can do these movements and to progress them the right way there instead of just jumping to it and, and risking injury.